What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ghost of the Night, a Hauntings and Paranormal Podcast. I am Phil Sams. Thank you so much for checking out this podcast. Sorry this one is a little late, but it's been really hectic around here, and I've been trying to get this out, and I actually had to record it, and something went wrong. So this is actually my third time recording this damn episode, but we're going to get it right this time. Today, I want to give you a few tips on ghost hunting, how you can get the best out of your experience if you want to do paranormal investigating, if you want to actually go out and try to interact with the spirit world. So let's just go ahead and get this started. Ghost in the Night with Phil Sams. I have around 13 tips that I want to share with you today on ghost hunting and I think these are pretty much the simple basics that anybody looking to actually get into ghost hunting or actually go on investigations or just has a general interest in the paranormal really should take some time, listen to and ponder them and understand what I'm trying to talk about. And if you've been in it in the field for a while, it's always good to refresh because these are the essentials in my personal opinion. So let's start with number one, know yourself. You want to know what type of investigator you'll be. What is your interest level? Are you looking to interact with spirits or are you just looking to be a thrill seeker? Are you looking to solve the problem? Answer the question of, is there something after death? Is that something that you're looking for? But if you just like to go out and go to creepy places, then that's fine. Just know yourself, know what you're getting into. And plus, when you know yourself, you know how you react in certain situations. If you get bored very easily, this might not be the field for you. You might really want to look into maybe doing something else and, or just keep watching it on television. But know yourself. That is key. Number two, be open-minded. The paranormal is a fascinating topic just for the mere fact of nobody truly knows the answer. If somebody tells you they have all the answers, they're full of shit. They don't know. You don't know. This is what it's about. It's about asking the hard questions and trying to come up with some kind of rational explanation of what these people are experiencing or what you have experienced. Is it of natural causes? Is it of supernatural causes? That is something that you have to be open-minded if you're going to ask these questions, if you're going to go out and investigate. So always be open-minded. You can't be too gung-ho on the flip side of that. If you truly believe that there is life after death, that ghosts and spirits are interacting with us, that's great, but you can't be too gung-ho because if you are, odds are you're going to actually attribute paranormal activity where it's not actually paranormal activity. 98% of the stuff you enter, you experience or you think you see is not paranormal. It's a trick of the eye or your brain interpreting something or might just be natural causes. So you have to be open-minded, not to the, just not to the fact that there is possible spirits interacting with us. You also have to be open-minded and think that, hey, maybe there isn't as much to this as what we originally thought. So be open-minded. Number three, know what kind of investigator do you want to be? Are you going to be somebody who is tech-heavy, who actually relies on documenting evidence with nothing but technology? Do you want to be a solo investigator? Do you want to investigate with a group? These are questions you need to answer if you want to be a successful and productive investigator. Number four, you need to pick a team if that's the way you want to go. I think everybody actually should pick a team because you need experience. You need to actually go out and learn from other people. That is really the best way to do it. That is the best way to learn. When you use somebody else's experience, you take in all or take in everybody's opinion. You learn from that and you develop your own style. That is 100% the best way to do it. It doesn't mean you can't go solo once you get some experience. I recommend going solo. I want to do more solo investigations because I like to be able to control the environment a little bit more when you get with teams. Sometimes it can be noisy. You got different personalities coming into it, and it can it can be difficult at times. You really need to think 
seriously about picking a team and picking the right team. Teams are important, but you need to be picky. You need to pick a team that is right for you. If you want a bigger team, you know, find some a team with or a big group of people. If you want a smaller team, four or five, six people, go that route. If you find a team, make sure the team is diverse. You need a skeptic in there. You need a psychic medium. You need a somebody that's tech savvy. You need somebody that knows what they're doing. You know, you need all of this. You need beginners. You need experts or experienced people. You need a well-rounded team. A lot of these teams can get heavy-handed on one side of these. Sometimes a team that's too wrapped up in the or has too many psychic mediums or sensitives that can really change an investigation. It can lean an investigation one way in one way, or sometimes paranormal evidence gets missed or evidence gets portrayed as paranormal that they didn't do their do their due diligence and find out possibly there was a more rational explanation for it. So you need to be or pick a team that is diverse and not too psychic medium heavy and not too skeptic heavy too. If you're with a team that all they want to do is prove that these things don't exist and that's not your style, you're not going to have as much fun with that. So be sure to pick a team that is right for you. Because I personally believe that a team needs a skeptic. They need at least one of everything, just for the mere fact that everybody's given their input and it causes you or it causes the team to have a better investigation. Things don't get missed. Things get analyzed a lot better. So pick a team that is definitely right for you and you feel comfortable with. Because these are strangers and you, you know, that can be difficult at times, you know, interacting and investigating with strangers because you're not confident, you may be shy, you may not really want to put yourself out there, but pick a team that is right for you. Number five, and this is probably the most important, is forget the damn paranormal shows. That's not paranormal investigating, that's entertainment. They do not look to actually prove, they say they want to prove the existence or answer questions. No, they want to entertain you. They want to sell commercials. They want to make money. And I'm here to tell you, if you go on a paranormal investigation, a real paranormal investigation, it is nothing like the television shows. There's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of sitting around talking to yourself in the dark. And, you know, here's the thing. You don't always have to investigate in the dark. The spirit world doesn't punch a time clock. They can show themselves or make noises, or try to communicate any time of day. It, it can be during the daylight. I've done investigations in the daylight. I've experienced things in the daylight. So you need to really understand that these paranormal shows aren't the Bible when it comes to ghost hunting. Now, they can give you a lot of ideas, but you need to really forget about them and develop your own style. Number six, research the history of the location. Now, this is I don't want to say controversial, but people have different opin- different opinions on this, especially if you are dealing with a psychic medium or somebody with sensitive abilities. A lot of times you'll hear them say they don't want to know anything. They just want to experience, want to feel. Okay, that's fine. I don't personally agree with that. I want to do the investigation. I want to know what to look for. I want to know who is there, who lived there. I want to have a conversation. I want to prove or at least have an experience, and what better way to have an experience than to relate to that spirit, to relate to that ghost. So know the history of the place, know who lived there, have an idea who people might think is still hanging around after death. This will give you something to talk about, give you, it will spark questions for your EVP sessions or your ghost box sessions. The more you know, I think the better off you are, and it will lead to a much more productive investigation. And most importantly, when you do your research, you want to know what you're dealing with. If you're dealing with something that might be a little bit more evil, dare I say demonic, you need to know this kind of stuff. Or if it's something that could be benign, but if you do a little research, you might see, okay, there is some darker stuff here. And you need to prepare accordingly because that can that has its issues in itself. It's an investigation. A police detective does not just go, I'm going to wing it. No. 
They do their research. They talk to people. Then they investigate and try to find evidence and put the whole story together. That's the way a paranormal investigation should be. You really want to think about that before you go out into the paranormal world and hit up some of these locations. Number seven. The next two are really related, so you need to listen to both of these. And number seven is don't expect activity. When you expect activity, you open yourself up to seeing things that might not be there. You get so excited about finding evidence and experiencing something that you might push too hard and you might see something that's paranormal that has a rational explanation for it. And that's just the way it is. Confirmation bias is a real thing. So when you are so gung-ho and you want to see and experience something that you can't explain, sometimes it will definitely cloud your judgment. So you need to approach an investigation without expecting to find evidence. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. I've experienced this on several investigations. I've had the same issue. I've kind of went into a place with a lot of reported activity and not experienced anything, and it's frustrating. And I've struggled with this myself on on a few occasions. But if you come into it not expecting to experience anything, just looking to do your investigation to the best of your ability and let what happens happen, you're in the right frame of mind and it will help you do a much better investigation. And locations with paranormal activity are very are very weird, I guess. It's, it's not coming to me exactly what the word's not coming to me. But you can have a boatload of experiences in one particular location and then the next night or say next time you visit the location you won't get shit and it's frustrating paranormal activity does not have a watch it does not always respond on demand it's the paranormal we don't know what it is so we don't know if we're dealing with intelligent beings or intelligent spirits or whatever We just know we are experiencing something and we try to document it. We try to find a reason for it and what's causing it. That is what we're trying to do. And when you want it so bad, your mind will definitely start playing tricks on you and cause you to possibly see things that aren't there. So number seven, don't expect activity and just do your investigation. Number eight is be skeptical. We've talked about being skeptical in a few of the other tips, but this is, it needs its own tip essentially when you investigate and i see this a lot and in social media you hear listen to people talk as a paranormal investigator you are interested in the paranormal you believe probably in the paranormal not necessarily but you probably do have some kind of belief system that involves the spirit world or spirit world or some other kind of dimension or whatever you categorize it as but Sometimes that gets clouded. Sometimes you are so bought into that concept that you don't see the real reason for a piece of evidence or the real reason why, you know, you heard that noise, you felt that gust of wind, or you walked into that cold spot. If you approach it in a skeptical manner or with a skeptical mindset, you always want to try to prove that it is paranormal. Come from the foundation that there's a rational explanation for this, what caused it. And if you cannot find that rational explanation, then it kind of moves into the paranormal category. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you have all the answers, and it doesn't mean it's 100% paranormal. It means you don't know exactly what caused it. So with your knowledge base, it's weird. You can't explain it. But somebody else might know or have more experience in, say, sound waves or climate or some something that might have caused that or carpentry with framing and how it responds to moisture and temperature change and all that you might not have all the answers but you have to be skeptical you have to look at every piece of evidence as it there is a rational explanation for it you just have to find it and when you can't find it then you have something then there's a possibility that you did have some sort of paranormal experience whenever you experience anything There's two questions you need to ask yourself, and this is imperative. You need to learn these two questions. Whenever you go into an investigation, whenever you experience something, ask, 
Why did that happen? And what caused that to happen? You answer those two questions, then you know what the reason is. You can't answer those two questions or there's some those answers are clouded or you don't quite understand it, then you could be dealing with something paranormal. So ask, know those two questions and always be asking those questions during your investigations. Why did that happen and what caused that to happen? Number nine, be respectful. Now, you need to be respectful to the location, to the property owners. Um, I know it's big to do a lot of uh, urban exploring. Don't trespass. Just because a place looks creepy doesn't mean there's activity there. Get permission and, you know, go from there. You know, you're probably saying, well, what a fuddy-duddy, but that's, you know, that's smart. No matter what the paranormal activity, it's not worth the uh, court case and it's not worth the headache. Now, when I talk about be respectful, there is this, especially if you watch the shows, there is a uh, concept of you see a lot of provoking and then you also see the flip side of that, especially on social media, where t- people talk about being respectful to the spirits. Now, I'm not one of these type of investigators that plays ball on either side of the camp. I'm, I, see, I do understand a reason for provoking, or not really provoking, being a little bit more aggressive in your investigation. And also, I see the point of being respectful. Now, you don't want to go into any situation during an investigation with guns blazing, looking to actually try to dominate the situation, come in bossy and bossing these whatever it is around. You need to be somewhat respectful at first. But there is a time not to be nice, in my opinion. And you hear people talk about, well, these are ghosts, these are spirits of the dead. Okay, that's fine if you believe that, but it's not a 100% fact. We don't know that for sure. I think you are correct in some aspects, but Not everything was a living being at one time. These are energies or beings that are on a different realm. Not all of them are people who have passed away in this realm, is my personal belief. I think when we pass on, we do go to a different realm. Our consciousness does go somewhere else. And I think there's more out there than meets the eye. But not everything in the spirit world, not everything that interacts with us in the paranormal sense necessarily was a walking, talking human being. So I understand you want to be respectful. And I think it's a good idea to start out an investigation. Just be inquisitive. Try to, just like you're meeting somebody new, ask questions. And if you've done your research, like we talked about earlier, you will kind of hopefully know a little bit and guide the conversation, for lack of a better word, but the investigation in certain ways until you get confirmation or you think it's you're dealing with something else. That's always a possibility. Now, there's those people that think you should never provoke. Now, I am okay with provoking if you feel intimidated or if you feel that something is psychologically or physically even attacking attacking you. I've been slapped. I've been pushed. Now, just because it's the spirit world or if even if it is the spirit of a dead human being or a dead person, you know, I'm not going to let a living person get away with that. I'm sure the hell I'm not going to let a spirit get away with it. In those situations, I will be a little bit more aggressive. I will put up boundaries because like in the paranormal protection episode i firmly believe we control this realm we are the masters of this realm this is our realm that's they are masters of their realm we control this one and the bleed through i don't believe i think we have the power over them physically psychologically is a different story but i'm not going to back down just because something might seem or tend to be more aggressive or darker or more evil whatever you want to call it in those situations i think it's okay to be a little bit more assertive and express your dominance and your power essentially i think that's important some people don't believe that and that's fine if you don't but i think to protect yourself you need to show power at insert if the situation arises that is the best way to handle it in my opinion that's the way i do it and I've not had any issues thus far. So always be respectful for, you know, be respectful when you first come in. Know what you want to do. Think of it like you are meeting somebody new. Ask questions. Just don't say, you know, and I've done this myself, you know, or some people say, can you show us you're here? I think you can still, you know, say, hey, can you give us a knock? As long as you are 
letting whatever it is know that you can't see them. You are just here to document their existence, their inter- your interaction with them. It's okay to say, hey, can you show me a sign of your presence or whatever? That is perfectly acceptable, and I encourage that. But be respectful and don't demand it. And always clarify what you're trying to do. Let whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever it is you're trying to talk to, let it know what you're doing. Let it know why you're doing it. And then if something feels a little bit more aggressive, hey, it's okay to ramp it up a little bit. All right, let's see here. Number 10. And this goes along with that as well. Introduce yourself and your team. Whenever you do an investigation, always try to introduce yourself like you're meeting a stranger. That starts the ball off rolling. That shows you're not there to do any harm. You want to be respectful to a certain extent. So it's always a good idea to introduce yourself and see where it goes. Let everybody know what's going on, team members and yourself and whatever is in the location with you. That's always the best policy. Now, it sometimes can feel weird, you know, when you are talking to something that you can't see or you not you can't necessarily hear. It feels weird to introduce yourself, but just get used to it. It does show some sort of sign of respect to that area and that spirit that might be there. So introduction is very important. Always start out each session with that. You know, I try to. I'm not going to say I've done it 100% of the time. Sometimes I even forget, but it's always good to introduce you and whoever else is in that session with you and let whatever is there know what you are doing. Number 11, know your equipment. Now, I'm not a super big equipment guy. I I personally believe that you are the best piece of paranormal equipment you have. What you feel, what you see, what you think, you know, use your senses to guide you in an investigation but it's always great to document your experiences document your sessions so know your equipment know what kind of camera you have what kind of digital recorder you have how it records how close you need to be what it picks up what it doesn't pick up know especially in audio recording software when you're listening to it back you know compression and noise filtering plays havoc with a recording so when if you compress it in any way shape or form or manipulate it in any way some strange things can pop up on there it's always best to actually listen to the raw footage before you do anything to it now if you want to post something always try to post it as close to the raw recording as you possibly can now other equipment you know such as emf detectors um, k2 meters anything that reads temperature Know how that stuff works. Know how it inter- interacts with the environment around it. And know know what causes those things to go off. EMF detectors and K2 meters, I'm they're great for one a few things, but I really like to use those to get baselines. Um, just because a K2 meter starts going off in the middle of a session doesn't necessarily mean that there's something interacting with the atmosphere check for high MF fields, check for fuse boxes, check to see where you get high readings. And if you're getting a high reading in a place you checked out before and you didn't get it before, you know, that is a little bit more credible than just if you get a, you walk into a room, start asking questions and all of a sudden K2 meter or an EF meter, EMF meter starts going off. You don't know the baseline for the room. So always do a baseline reading. Now, there's a million different pieces of equipment. Personally, like I said earlier, you're the best piece of equipment. Start there and get something to document and to record. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars to start out. Just take everything you need is on your phone probably. You know, you can record, you can shoot video and go from there and build as you go and develop your own style. And then you can add to your toolbox essentially. But know how it all works. Know what causes the equipment to trip just use it to build your investigation not i like to use it to prove that something isn't paranormal not necessarily that it is paranormal so you know you develop your own style add what you need but 
just you can start off small. Start off with your cell phone. If you have an iPhone or Android or whatever, just take it and start recording. That's the best and easiest way to do it. Number 12, know your surroundings and location. Now, this is purely a safety issue. You know, most times you're going to be dealing with old places. So I should have said this about equipment too. Flashlight, key, especially if you're in these old locations like I'm talking about in 12. You know, they can be dangerous. You can, a lot of times there can be asbestos, mold, not the best foundations. You know, know what you're getting into and always carry a flashlight with you because you can be as brave as you want, but if you fall through a floor or, you know, trip over something, that's going to end your investigation real quick. Now, number 13, the last one I want to talk about is spiritual protection. And I kind of touched up on this a little bit in the uh, other tips. I'm not super big on spiritual protection. I don't think it's the trinkets or the stones or the crystals, I should say. I think we give those the power. Bottom line is you need to protect yourself in some some form or fashion, but I think you give those things the power. If you believe that you know crystals will protect you, or there are certain crystals, and I did cover those in that episode, Paranormal Protection, but I think you charge those. You enhance those. Your belief in the cross or in a rosary or whatever you choose to protect yourself with, you give it the power. It comes from your own internal strength, your own mental power. That's where the protection really comes from. So before you do any investigation, go through, develop a, your own ritual, develop your own protection. You know, be strong, be confident, be in the right frame of, frame of mind. Those are all good things to protect you spiritually because you will at times come across something darker, something you know, I don't want to say evil, but something that's, you know, you're not going to feel comfortable. I've been in situations where I did not feel comfortable. Like I said I've, earlier, I've been smacked, I've been pushed, and I've been made to feel ill. In that particular investigation at the, I believe it was the dollhouse, I was sick. I mean, in one room, I always felt like I was sick. I felt like it was almost claustrophobic would be a good way to describe it, but I was nauseous, and it wasn't It was just in one room, and then it wasn't for the whole night. I walked into the room later on in the investigation, and I didn't feel the same thing. And when I did feel that way, it was lit. It was actually in the walkthrough. We were doing a walkthrough, you know, getting some baselines. And that's when I felt ill. I felt like I was under attack. But actually, when we went lights out and started doing the investigation, I didn't feel anything. So when that did happen, you know, I mentally prepared myself for it and maybe that's part of the reason why when I did it went back into that room during the investigation you know it whatever was there whatever was causing that did not try it again or did not do it again and therefore I didn't uh, have the same reaction or whatever it is maybe just moved on so always protect yourself some way you know whether that be having some kind of religious artifact with you or just mentally prepare yourself just always protect yourself in some way shape or form that's going to uh, wrap up this list now this is a growing list and this is what i feel is important now i'm sure i will add this in future episodes because this this isn't this is all be all the list this is just some great starter great way to start your investigations and prepare and know what you're getting into so follow these tips and hopefully you will have a good time and actually learn some stuff and hopefully to have some type of activity it'll give you the best possible chance to experience something and come away from it in a good state of mind 